Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm at Arches National Park, home to over 2,000 natural arches, some of which span over 300 feet. It's the densest concentration of natural stone arches in the entire planet. So, how'd they get here? Let's find out today on Outsider Classroom. <music> understand why we see all these arches, let's take a trip back to around 300 million years ago. This was a time of big geologic change. Supercontinents were splitting up and tectonic plates were on the move. Where we're standing at today was a tropical sea. Well, at least sometimes. You see, Earth's climate tends to go through cycles, often lasting millions of years. Sometimes this area was underwater, but sometimes when the climate got cooler, more water was in the polar ice caps and the seas retreated. But when seas retreat, they leave a little something to remember them by, salt. Over 15 million years, sea levels rose and fell almost 30 times. Each time the seas retreated, they left behind the salt that was dissolved in the water, and a lot of it. The salt deposits under Arches National Park is over 5,000 feet thick. That's enough salt to season enough pretzels to feed Okay, well, let's just say that's a lot of pretzels. So how did a giant slab of salt result in all these sandstone arches? Let's check in with Dr. Tamsin McCormick and learn more. What happens is we get, we get the, the different layers. Some of them are soft and some of them are hard. And the salt rising up and it forms these anticlines. Gaps between the fins start to widen. Water can then percolate down through those fractures and reach the salt bed. Salt is uh, soluble in water, and so it will dissolve. That salt then could get uh, moved out, and it leaves us with a bit of a space problem. And so the, the roof collapses, and so that forms these valleys, which are not formed by rivers. They're rather unusual. And right on the edge of the valleys, as that salt layer is... Um, has been excavated, you can start to see those, the, the sandstone sort of rolling a little bit into the, into the valley on the edge here. And that's where those um, many, many arches form, right in those fins on the edge of those valleys. Salt played a big role in creating these amazing arches, but that's only half the story. The other half, good old H2O, when it rains, water dissolves a little bit of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, creating a weak acid called carbonic acid. It's the same acid in soda. Over time, that rain reacts with the rock, breaking it down bit by bit, grain by grain. That's exactly what happened here. Over millions of years, the sandstone was carved by rain, creating these beautiful arches. Scientists call this chemical weathering, when a chemical reaction breaks down rock. The same thing happens when oxygen in the atmosphere reacts with minerals, or when plants secrete enzymes to let them get a better hold on hard surfaces. These are all chemical reactions. But chemistry isn't the only way to break apart rock. Sometimes you just need a little muscle work. Breaking rocks apart takes a lot of work, but the elements are at it 24-7. Blunt forces like wind or rain can, over time, break down rocks. Wind plays an important role in shaping the landscape of arches in particular because it picks up sand grains from the desert and blows them across a mostly treeless landscape, basically acting like a sandblaster. And while we are in a desert, it does rain, and it does get below freezing, especially at night. When rainwater seeps into the cracks of the rocks and freezes, it expands, pushing the rocks apart. Over time, these cracks get bigger, which allow for more rainwater to get in. When that freezes and expands, it pushes the rock apart even further, creating this vicious cycle that breaks apart the rocks. These processes are called physical or mechanical weathering because they involve physical forces breaking apart the rocks. 
chemical and physical weathering work together to shape Earth's surface, here and, well, everywhere else on the planet. But it's been a particular set of circumstances that have led to the creation of all these arches. First, the Salt Valley formed, which created all of those sandstone fins that were eventually weathered away. There's a few other factors here as well. This is a desert, so we don't get much rain, so the chemical weathering process happens pretty slowly. We're also in the middle of a tectonic plate. Earthquakes are rare, and arches aren't destroyed or collapsed before they're done forming. All these geologic processes have worked together to make thousands of arches in the park. There's lots of fun things to do and explore at arches. Hiking, mountain biking, rock climbing. But it gets pretty hot during the day, so make sure you got plenty of water, extra snacks, a good map, and sun protection. Okay class, pop quiz! You should always stay on the mark trails because A, there may be rock formations that are unstable and blocked for your own protection, B, wandering off trail can destroy fragile habitat, or C, it's super easy to get lost in the desert. That's right, it's D, all of the above. Congratulations, you aced that quiz. Remember, this park is protected if all of us work to keep it that way. So stay on the trails and follow all the park regulations. And if you have any questions, ask a ranger. Now, get out there and start exploring. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.